instant before you make a decision or before trying something new is completely natural. A little bit of self-doubt is a good thing. However, the trouble happens when that little self-doubt turns into full-blown fear. So in this episode, I want to break down a five-step process that is going to help you overcome your self-doubt. Hi and welcome back to another episode of Up It and the Actionables podcast. In case we haven't already met, my name is Baby. I think it's safe to say that every single one of us experiences self-doubt. So let's start by agreeing that not all self-doubt or fear is necessarily a bad thing. Let's discuss why. For example, if you are hesitant about placing your trust in somebody you barely know, that's a good healthy sign of self-doubt. From an evolutionary standpoint, a little bit of fear has always been a good thing since it protects us from real physical danger. So this becomes a starting point to overcome your self-doubt. By learning to identify whether your self-doubt is really warning you against physical mortal danger or whether you simply need to push through your fear. So before we get into the process of identifying and overcoming your self-doubt, I want to know from you, how often do you experience self-doubt? Comment below and let me know. I would love to hear from you guys. One of the best analogies that I've learned about fear is from this book called Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Folio. Allow me to read you a couple of lines. What if fear's message was in danger, but do it. Fear was jumping up and down, waving her hands and causing the biggest ruckus she could. Yes, yes, yes. This is important. Go ahead. Do this thing. Fear did her job and sent her signal. It was our interpretation that was off. Isn't that beautiful? So fear is both necessary and it can also be directive in nature. It is up to us how we interpret our fear. Here are my five steps as to how you can overcome your fear of self-doubt. First one is physical danger. What are the chances that you are in real physical danger while you're pursuing your goal? Like I mentioned earlier, from an evolutionary standpoint, fear was great because it helped our ancestors to not get eaten by a tiger. But let's agree that most of the goals that we are going to be pursuing, we are not really in any kind of serious physical danger, right? And when we realize that we're not in real harm's way, we can then start to be objective about our fears. Second is absence of fear. And I'd like you to imagine, what if you felt absolutely no fear? How would you pursue this goal? How would you go about it? Pretty fearlessly, correct? Well, I hope you said yes. And with that, we can move on to step number three. Number three is guide or threat. Now you have a decision to make over here. Every time you're faced with self-doubt or any other fear for that matter, you get to decide how do you want to treat your fear. If you choose to use your fear as a guide, then you're choosing to pursue your goal despite your fears. In that case, you're going to have to make space to feel that fear and yet take action. Not going to be easy but definitely going to be a much more enriching experience than if you were to choose your fear as a threat. And no one can tell you what you should be choosing, whether you should be choosing your fear as a guide or as a threat. Number four is regret or fear. Now, no matter what you do in life, you're always going to have fear of some sort. Life will never be free of fear. That's why there's a saying that the brave are not unafraid. They simply don't allow fear to stop them. You can either choose to be afraid of your fears and allow it to stop you in your tracks or you can choose to get over them. The price of not overcoming your fears is you may regret them later on. The price of regret is far worse than the price of overcoming your fears. Final fifth step is the quality of experience. By following these above four steps, by now, you should be familiar with your fear and what you want to do with it. Do you want to make room for it? You want to overcome your fears or do you want to be scared by them? In the end, it is completely up to you. However, before you finally decide, I want you to ask yourself this question. What is the quality of experience that you're choosing? When you choose to give up because of feeling fear, that experience is very different from choosing to overcome your fears. 
and choosing to overcome your fears will always be a much more enriching experience. It will be more exciting and definitely worth it. So you need to choose whether you're going to overcome your fears or be stopped by them. Like everything else, it is a choice. Now I want to hear from you. How did this episode resonate with you? Comment below and let me know. In case you haven't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will meet you in the next episode. Till next time, remember, what you want matters and it's really up to you to make it happen. Take good care of yourself and I will meet you next week.